Hello, hello, everybody. In coordination with the Fluoroquinolone Toxicity Study Foundation, here is part three in the three-part series titled The Overlook Risks, Medical Scans, Contrast, Anesthesia, and Fluoroquinolone Toxicity, which will focus on anesthesia. It's totally understandable that people with FQAD, which is also known as fluoroquinolone associated disability, are hesitant about taking more medications, especially when it comes to anesthesia. Research has shown that fluoroquinolone antibiotics can interfere with mitochondrial function, which is very concerning since mitochondria are the powerhouse of your cells and play a huge role in overall systemic health. Most anesthesia guidelines for mitochondrial safety are specified for primary mitochondrial disease, which is PMD, a genetic condition that might be helpful for those dealing with FQAD. The three types of anesthesia are general, local, and regional. And due to the amount of data, the following information is geared just toward major surgeries requiring general anesthesia. For individuals with mitochondrial issues, anesthesia isn't always straightforward, and here's why. One. Heightened drug sensitivity may prolong sedation or muscle weakness because the body struggles to metabolize anesthetic drugs efficiently. Two, anesthesia can push an already struggling energy system into overdrive, sometimes leading to the inability to clear lactic acid properly, which can be made worse by supporting medication used during surgery. Three, certain muscle relaxants sometimes used, such as succinylcholine, may cause extended paralysis in patients with compromised mitochondrial function, making post-surgical recovery more challenging. Four, some anesthetics can increase oxidative stress, potentially worsening brain fog, neuropathy, and other neurological symptoms. When it comes to mitochondrial issues, some anesthesia agents are generally considered more favorable than others, though opinions vary within the scientific and medical community. The choice of anesthesia depends on several factors, including the patient's specific condition, the type and length of surgery, and which drugs will be used to induce and maintain anesthesia. Total intravenous anesthesia, TIVA, is often preferred over inhaled anesthetics, Propofol, while commonly used in surgeries, should be approached with caution due to its multiple effects on mitochondrial function. It's recommended for induction rather than continuous infusion because of this. Patients with mitochondrial dysfunction are likely at higher risk to develop propofol infusion syndrome. Ketamine is another intravenous option often combined with dexmedetomidin, a drug which provides sedation with minimal respiratory depression and has a more favorable profile for those with mitochondrial dysfunction. This combination allows for lower dosages of ketamine, thus reducing potential risks. Anesthesiologists may also tailor their approach by mixing different agents to balance effectiveness and safety. To mitigate possible issues, there are some things you can do before surgery, such as select a reputable university or hospital where you can choose your anesthesiologist as opposed to those that are subcontracted and show up just before surgery. It is vital you have a conversation with the anesthesiologist well in advance of the surgery date. Schedule your surgery for the first morning slot to minimize fasting time and reduce stress on your body and energy levels for a better outcome. Unfortunately, direct human data is lacking when it comes to anesthesia and mitochondrial response and remains variable to interpretation and debate. It is important to remember that the absence of published reports and adverse effects with an agent does not mean that the agent is safe. It more likely reflects a possible publication bias. To protect your health, Always research in advance and ask detailed questions about all medications, IVs being used, as well as potential side effects based on your medical history. Finally, ensure you have proper notation in your medical file about possible mitochondrial dysfunction due to fluoroquinolones in case you must have emergency surgery at some point. For patients with FQAD, every health decision matters. Understanding the potential risks of anesthesia empowers patients to make informed choices and advocate for safer care options. If you have experienced symptoms after general anesthesia, sharing your story can help raise awareness and guide others navigating these challenging health decisions. If you're willing to share your story, please leave your thoughts in the comment section. I have to say this on behalf of myself and the Fluoroquinolone Toxicity Study Foundation, this video is based on experience and it is for informational and educational purposes only. 
We are not doctors and are not here to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any illness or disorder. Please work with your health care provider to do so. Hope this video was informative and helps you understand how anesthesia affects mitochondria, especially if you are floxed, have fluoroquinolone toxicity, or FQAD. This concludes the three-part series. Hope it was informative, and if you're looking for any other information in any other series, please reach out, and we would be more than happy to create them for you. Thanks, everybody.